there. It's Mike. And Katie. And we're on episode 90. What are we looking at today? Well, it's the next up in Christopher Nolan's Batman with The Dark Knight. And here we go on Cup of Red. Hey everyone, we're back. We're back at it. Another week, another movie, another fantastic adventure in the minds and lives of Cup of Red. <laughs> always fun <laughs> hopefully hopefully we're enjoying hopefully we're enjoying it i i saw today um already on a comment someone had posted a star wars picture uh pop culture crew had, po- had done that and uh theo at insane dragon ball had commented about the uh pop rocks and soda nice uh, because it was anakin and obi-wan so that that, that made my night <laughs> So, and I know, I know, um, I got, I got a comment, uh, in the last episode too, uh, about, um, my parenting <laughs> and my, my rage about, about the Batmobiles, ah, okay. uh, from Justin. Uh, so that was a, that was a pretty funny moment. Agreeing with you or, un- yeah, yeah. I, or yeah. letting it go that, you know, you know better about the Batmobiles. I, I know better. Well, we know that, but I'm yeah, just right. curious. <laughs> Uh, but you know, in all fairness too, in case anyone took it too seriously, it was a joke. I, you know, he has his own opinion cause it's really that teaching moment too, of realizing he has his own wrong opinion. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then they're teaching him that everyone has a different opinion. Oh, we're just joking. And so, um, we never ragged on him for, for the like of the tumbler versus, no. you know, his dislike of the others. Well, you know what? Quite honestly, his, his, I'm going to say fandom of Batman is so touching that barely touches the surface of yours. So Mm -hmm. of course you're going to have deeper feelings about that, you know, but he has things that are really important to him, of course. So, yeah. And you could care less about, so he's going to have an opinion about something and you could say, well, animal crossing casually. (laughs) I know. Right. Casually. I like this. And he's going to be like, what? Yeah. So that's what happens when you have something that you really, really care about. Right. Exactly. Like I have my own opinions about Harley Quinn that aren't shared by everyone. So, (laughs) Very true. So, yeah. so uh, tonight we're drinking a beer. Uh, we're it's hot enough because it is hot as hell. <laughs> tomorrow will be hot, and it'll be warmer tomorrow. Some are hit with vengeance. Yep, that's what you wanted. I know. I just wanted to go to the damn lake. Yeah. <laughs> Which I am happy I did get to go to the lake, and I got even like a tan and everything. It's good stuff. Yeah, and Kiddo didn't even burst into flames. Yeah, he didn't. I was full on expecting it. We were we told him we were joking that he's so he's because of not having school, he didn't have the same playground time and he normally and would with have the quarantine you weren't supposed to you couldn't go to playgrounds. Yeah, and... so you know, he normally would have had some some build up of a tan, you know, and he has no tan line. So we were joking with him that he was a vampire and he was gonna burst into flames when he hit the sun. Yep. But he didn't even burn. We were very per- careful about sunscreen, yeah. of course, but then he was all worried about it, too. And uh, I don't think he he got nothing. So, no. which is a good thing. We did our, our job at least. Per- or he's just got that resilience as well. A combination of things. Right. So could be which is good. Right. Yeah. So uh, why are why are we here? Why are we here today? Well, we're here to talk to you about the Dark Knight. The uh, second installment in Christopher Nolan's. That's Batman right. Universe. So. Christopher Nolan came back to do another one. Yeah. And this one here, he got to work with IMAX uh, to film some scenes, uh, which is, at the time, was cutting edge. Now it seems like old hat. Yeah. Uh, One thing you notice if you watch, like, the Blu-ray and stuff like that, the scenes will shift their aspect ratio. And when it fills your television, it's the IMAX camera. And you know what's nice is it's very subtle. Like, it's not jarring because the movie is so dark, honestly. Mm. It helps that there's no blinding change because the black frames it nicely, um, quite honestly. Because at first when you you told me about it, I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. It switches back and forth. Yeah. And I just didn't even realize it. So I noticed it worse in um, Dark Knight Rises. Oh, yeah. Because there's a lot more um, in-betweens. This here, like, it seemed like more like an entire scene was filmed in it. Mm-hmm. And then you had, you had like three or four key scenes. Yeah, it was like, the and that was stuff. it. And then, yeah. Uh, so then they got a little too overzealous and were like, what can we film in IMAX? Right. <laughs> That's so. funny. But uh, so the movie starts. The movie starts with probably the best uh, James Bond scene ever. 
uh, yeah, because that's basically the more I've watched these and realizing that Nolan had said that these were his James Bond movies. Uh, the movie opens with a bank heist and there's all these clowns doing all these things to rob this bank. Mm hmm. Oh, well, I love that it just jumps right into it. Yes. You know, it, there's no Batman or, or welcome or recap or anything. It's just like what's <laughs> previously on. previously on. Right. Uh, it's just it just jumps to the action. Right. What's wild, too, is that it's silent for the first few. Yeah. S- more than a few seconds. But while on the movie and Kid was like, uh, did something go wrong? What's going on? <laughs> like, wait for it. And yeah. then that music has hits build up. in. Right. Yeah. And that's one thing that I did notice that I like the music in this one more than the first one mm. uh, because it had its own little thing. It had more chaos to the whole everything. Right. Yeah. And you could definitely tell that they got to play a bit more with with how they wanted the sound. Right. Uh, so opens up and then they're setting up and they're talking. They're talking about this mysterious Joker that's setting up this plan. And then Everyone, once they finish their part, they're like, poppity pop pop. Down they go. Yep. Poppity pop pop. (laughs) Okay. Would you prefer poppity pop pop or pew pew? I don't know, actually. Poppity pop pop. Pew pew. But pew pew sounds more like a laser. I think. I think. Okay. So we we save save poppity pop pop. pop, pop. Okay. Pop 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 pop. Now we've solved that mystery. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So, so, you know, handguns. Pop 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 pop. Yep. You know, Blasters, pew pew. You know, okay. shotguns, boom. Okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> so now that you know where the sound effects are, now I don't have to go over them. The rest of the thing. So, so you're going along. And, the more you know. And uh, the one, the one guy's like, you know, what was this jam? No fair that you know. There's, there's so many of us that has to have to do this and blah blah blah. And well, guy, sorry, yeah, like oh, he just sits up there and he just plans all this. Yeah, thing and he's just gonna take advantage of us and and then just. Pop, pop. Yeah. And uh, so they start going down and they, they load up. And then there's the bank manager and the bank manager comes up. He's like, yo, guess what, yo, you fools. This is a mafia bank. Boom. Huh? Boom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, that was even better. And uh, so so he starts starts firing off his boom. And uh, I don't know why. It's like what books did you ever have those books when you were little the sound effect buttons on the side <laughs> you push the oh my god that was like my favorite thing ever so you would read it and it was like oh what do i press in the buttons <gasps> whoa that was like a total flashback <laughs> so there's 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 your sound oh. effects uh, I'm sorry. I'm super giddy over here now. Uh, childhood <laughs> memories were all about red nostalgia, right. right? I had forgotten about them. Uh, <laughs> so then you get to the point where you actually get the the first reveal, and the guy is like, you know, I'm pretty sure the boss said the, you know, you I'm supposed to take, you're gonna take me out, and he's like, no, 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 I'm supposed to take out the bus driver, yeah. right? And it's a cool moment where, you know, he's like, what? And all of a sudden, this bus just backs right into the guy right there was no bus driver what? Right? and then and, oh yeah now there's a bus yeah and then they load up and they fire poppity pop pop and uh he, you know takes his away his money and the thing that i really liked about this introduction to the joker is this joker is, is what i believe is the best version cinematically of the joker even though i love nicholson's um film version because Ledger's Joker is awkward, humorous, but awkwardly humorous. You don't know if you should be laughing or if you should be cringing. And that's what you and love that, about the Joker. Yeah, and that's what they did so well with the animated series, right? Yes. So you've got the bank manager that he's taken down and he's put a grenade in his mouth and it's like, it's got a string and he, it gets caught on him a few times and he struggles and he crawls up into the... You he know, just the closes bus. the door yeah, and it has a string. And, and then it turns out to not even be a bomb. It was just gas and yeah. it was nothing. Yeah. Right. And I think that was just a great scene. And then he rolls out and he pull, pulls into the, the, the line of buses and mm-hmm. no one's the wiser. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's cool, too, because it shows how intelligent he is and how well he can actually plan things. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and which was which was interesting right yeah you know like it, i think it that's what i really his, like with this the idea he's is got they, a lot of skill and yeah a lot of intelligence and that's what makes him scarier and then they talk about the comics the comics always say that he's actually like hyper intelligent mm. he's not crazy yeah you know i'm not crazy you know it's, mm-hmm. it's i'm he's he's too he's you know he doesn't well he's he's broken in he's, a different way he's broken yeah and he's not He's not crazy to, well, because crazy doesn't have that concept. I don't, you know, that term yeah. is nothing to do with intelligence. Yeah. Right. Um, it's for him, it's a lack of remorse or a different way of thinking about yeah. something or, you know, not normal for what we think fits in, in our world. Mm-hmm. Right. That's all it really is. So, yeah. you know, psychopaths, sociopaths, they're all highly intelligent. I yeah. mean, it sounds bad, but I mean, how else would serial killers exist? Exactly. There's intelligence in serial killers. Right. That's the only way that it gets to happen. So right, exactly. So you know, it's that that whole ball. Yeah. Uh, they also have, and it's been circulated the internet for like a bazillion years now. That that the the mask that the, the Joker thug wears is very similar to uh, the Batman sixty six, the first introduction. Mm. The same kind of mask feel that he wore in that. And yeah. Those nods to all that. Um, so then from that, it skips ahead, and now you get to the night, and you know. Uh, there's a big drug deal going on mm-hmm. and lo and behold scarecrow is back mm. um and it was odd is to think that you would never have thought that scarecrow would be in three batman movies the most a villain has been in any batman movies. yeah you're right uh in still one series large, apparently right yeah. so but but we still just get him he's still just businessman scarecrow who barely puts yeah. on the mask um and he's all you know the guy's got dogs and, and all that and um well they're just they're battling back and forth between because he does he the scarecrow is selling drugs that are making people totally trip, uh, trip out and kind of cause death or permanent damage type thing yep. so it doesn't make for repeat clients of course so the drug dealer is angry about that yeah the other side of the mafia is just like what's up with yeah this? so they're starting to fight right because scary drugs yeah and they start hearing noises and the guy's like i've got my dogs yo i got yeah. my big dogs and- i love scarecrow when when this 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 Batman shows up, you know, and he's like, wait a second, no no yeah. no, that is not the Batman. Right. Like, and he's like this little kid. Well, because he's still so broken from his own drugs. Yeah, right? so he's so giddy about it. Because then when Batman does show up, because you have all these imitations, right? When Batman shows up, he's like, oh, that's better. That's yeah. more like it, you know. Yeah. And he's just wide eyed and so happy. Yeah. And it's just it it's he does it so well mm-hmm. that there's so much intrigue about it. There's no fear about Batman. It's it's more of just like, ooh, what is he gonna do now? Right. You know? You know, and that that continues almost like with the idea of like the bond feeling where it's like just like recurring kind of like mm-hmm. character. And it would have been nice to see him be able to face off against Murphy as Scarecrow yeah. more in some form, right? Versus what we you know, he was only just like a two-bit thug Mm -hmm. and that's one thing that i do feel is missing from a lot of superhero movies those two-bit thugs i think scarecrow is higher on the list than two-bit thug. yeah but i think um that like we don't get those like those those james bond moments in a lot of movies i think that's what this really succeeded Mm. by doing because scarecrow never overshadowed anything that happens with the joker yeah so and that's something too i think Everyone always talks about there only being two villains in all these movies. Well, you know, there's three in this one, technically. Mm-hmm. But the other one just really isn't one and done. Yeah. Right? And so, he's still apparently there, you know. He shows back up in the third one. Right? So he's, you know, still still around. All right. So so you go ahead and you have your battle. And, and, and uh, these guys are out there with shotguns and... and uh, you know, Batman's fighting them off and they're so all dressed up like him. The, yeah, the, the the imitations plus the bad guys and yeah. he, he does everything, right? So. And then he gets he gets uh, the um, bitten by a dog and it's pretty brutal too because he's like, dog charges him he grabs him and he like, you know, hits him. Like, yeah. Like, it's pretty bad. Uh, Doesn't he just chuck them off the parking garage? No. No? I that's, thought that I thought that was different. The oh, yeah. So no, at some point he kills a dog. <laughs> Two dogs. which is like, oh no, Batman, what have you done? <laughs> Um, but yeah, so in the, I love how he runs up and he's like watches and, and poises ready to like leap, um, when Scarecrow is driving down that circular structure. Right? Yes. And that's such a cool scene as he like flies down and lands on the, well, the, the, roof, the, right? the plan of 
I knowing when to jump mm-hmm. to make sure he lands on that is yeah. just ridiculously perfect. Let's be honest, but still, it's really it's awesome. Mathematically, just to possible. pretend that it's possible. So, well, let's go do it right now. Oh sure, okay. I'll jump off the roof. You just jump off the roof, right. and I'll see if you can land on the. Oh, yeah, as yeah. you pull into the garage. Yeah, it'll be yeah, good. Okay. <laughs> Ah, my back and legs. <laughs> uh, I was trying to prove a point. <laughs> that you're not Batman. <laughs> <gasps> you shut your dirty mouth. Get off this podcast. Out, out. <laughs> Leave now. Uh, but then it's, you know, the guy's like, you know, yo, what up? We're just trying to be like you and blah, blah. What's the difference? And it's, you get that, that yeah, same right. slide. But I'm not wearing hockey pads. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, but now he's been bitten by a dog and Alfred's like, man, you need to learn how to dress your wounds. And he's yeah. like, I got this. And he's like, no, you don't, bitch. Like, come on. You're going to mess this up. <laughs> like, you look like a cheese factory here. Like, you're all <laughs> messed up. Oh, holes and scars and all sorts right? of things. And so he fixes him up and and then... And then he goes right to Lucius and says, "Yeah, I need a new suit. Yeah, right. I need a new suit. And, you know, he's, he's like, well, if I, I could make you a plated suit and, you know, less, more, less, uh, you know, you there's more mobility. Neck, you can you, turn, you, yeah. but you're not going to, and knives are going to be a problem. Yeah. And that's what I thought was hilarious. That's like what he, he specifically says is, yeah, you know, you're going to be more vulnerable to knives. <laughs> And there's that moment where you're like, hmm, stronger suit, move more, move more, I can get shanked more. Mm. Hmm, I'm dealing with thugs with knives. <laughs> hmm. I just have to kick them faster. Right. And they just learn That's how to kick it, faster. Yeah. yeah. So he just goes ahead and he's going to design a new suit. And, uh, oh, you also get to find out that the, the new suit's going to have, uh, his uh, his gauntlets can now fire batarangs out of the. Uh, really, the I didn't know that. It's not batarangs, but they're the the the. the oh, they they shoot the, the little oh the stabby stabby. <laughs> that is the wrong sound wait, effect. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Okay. <laughs> they, they, you know, they're gonna the stabby stabby things with the yeah. sound. Okay, yeah, yeah. I didn't realize. Okay, there we go. What do you think of the bat suit in this movie? I'm not a big fan of the plated bat suit. Yeah. Um, I like the look of the begin suit just because it seemed more comic booky. This mm-hmm. is going in, this became more angular, less round. Yeah. But then it matches everything else that he, you know, he, he has. It matches right? the Templar. Right? It's plated, <laughs> it's more angular. Um I think his head looks a little more different, like his cowl. Looks is this tighter. The, the squished face Batman. Yeah, this is squished face. Well, even Batman. Kiddo noticed it. He's like, it looks like he, you know, is like squishing it, out of the yeah the cow. because it's not as it's because it's, it's like a secondary piece to the head versus like the neck and piece. Yeah, right. So he's got more like pushed up. You're like how's that helping? His face is more like he, pursed. Yeah, he sounds. Yeah, he sounds like that. He's always just like. <laughs> yeah, I'm Batman. <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, no, I gotta cover my nose, too, because it looks like he can't breathe, too, while he's doing it. Because his lip is always pulled up. <laughs> yeah, so this is what it's like to be Batman in Dark Knight. But then I gotta go sound more like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're all going down. Fear me. That's a pretty good impression, actually. I mean, I, I should probably take a picture of this. I can't breathe. Because <laughs> I'm trying to breathe through my mouth. And it's hot. <laughs> I'm covering my nose. I'm getting sweaty. This is wrong. Oh. Sorry for the nose sounds. Oh. But that's what it's like. It's it's like it's all tight on him. Like he's that's one thing I he noticed. He looks very constricted. And he, yeah, and and he sounds like it. And yeah, his lip is always pulled up as if you know it's it's pulled yeah. Open. And his mouth is open. Yeah, it's and just like he's like I don't know. I don't. I might go. I might just go back to the old suit just because it was like no, nah, yeah. no, I'm not digging this. Yeah. Not happening. <laughs> Okay, so where were we? You know, in the in little bit of like holding my face in the temperatures that we have right now. You mad? Like he's gotta have to pee a lot. 
Because he's going to be hydrating like mad. How does Batman hydrate? I mean, does he have like endless water supplies he's, in the tumbler? He's got to. Yeah. Because I got sweaty just Watson from that little station, bit of a moan. Water. Right? <laughs> yeah. Like, so then Batman oh, I would die. Are you not kidding too me? far I, off. If I'm not the, drinking water, like something's wrong. Yeah. Like so. with his bat credit card, it's not too far off then. Like yeah. Schumacher had it right. He was like, hey, this dude needs a credit card because he's going to need to drink. He's going to have to go get a big gulp. Every hour. Right? <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> that's why no one wants to get in the tumbler because it kind of smells like urine, probably. <laughs> oh, oh, that's horrible. Oh, God. It's not like you could take it off. It's like, does he have a bat cup? No, I know. It's like, it's like legitimate questions of like, how does Batman pee? Right? Because, yeah. He Maybe it's a filtration have- system. Maybe he pees and it goes into tubing that cools his body. Pee is warm, man. Yeah, I said a system. I know. <laughs> not just like bathing in pee. I know that. That man's not Trump. But... Oh, in Russia. Oh no. <laughs> he's he's literally he's he's sissy science. But yeah, science. I mean, he's gotta have something there, right? But it's those questions of like, how does that happen? Yeah. You know? No, there's maybe it's just a cut, maybe it's just a full on cut. Maybe it's just like maybe he has a button and it opens. You know, like Ant Man has a little like things so to make just him big pops and pops open, yeah, and just that flops way. out. <laughs> I like how, how it's so tight; it's just gonna flop out. There's <laughs> 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 a new sound effect. Right, yeah, 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 it's a very specific sound effect. <laughs> Good God, it's a bat wang. You know they had the, that that whole scandal with that black series thing oh, that, that the artist so. they had drawn when Batman came out and he was like oh when yeah Batman's uh, and then, shadow was showing yeah and then they're like oh I guess we got to black that out we can't show his can't oh, good you know. gracious it's like well you know he is sick and twisted so I wouldn't doubt that you know yeah you know, it's that idea of like having you as a person stood staring into your closet naked going what am I gonna wear today right. Yeah, Batman's probably Bruce is probably the same way. He's it's like, just like he was. They were trying to just make him like every suit, other person, right? And then that—that's the moment where everyone was like, "Oh my god!" Everyone loses their mind. <laughs> Suddenly, <laughs> right? Oh my god, Batman has a penis. <laughs> <laughs> the Bat Cup. <laughs> okay, we are off topic. Let's get back to the movie. Uh, yeah. Um, so, so, so you find out that. Um, there, the there was mob money and all that, and Gordon's trying to figure out where the mob money went, yeah. and where it's going, and all that, and uh, so then, uh, then you because well, we have the new uh, district attorney who's trying yeah. to take down crime, right? Yeah, we got introduced to Harvey Dent. Harvey Dent, um, and he's he's a uh, well, you have first you have you have Joker's um, scene with the mob, mm. right? Sorry, I wasn't trying to go. No, no, no. Um, so the, uh, that scene that, that's probably one of my favorite scenes in the movie yes and the mob's all like freaking out they're like what do we do like, like they, yeah, they're, they're like, looking for our money you know, and, and then this guy shows up on the TV and he's like you know I know exactly what you should do you can send your money over to me in China and we'll figure it out and we'll launder it and la ha 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 yeah right and then the Joker walks in and this is probably one of my favorite scenes where you know he comes in there and he's like you know what do you you know what do you want I just want to show you a magic trick and make this pencil disappear right and then just jams the guy's head onto the pencil right and it's just it's, it's one of those awkward things where you want to laugh at it because that's kind of funny it is but it's like oh my god you just jabbed a pencil into someone's head that's mm-hmm. not funny no right and that's a perfect that that's perfectly fits what that that the Joker is right exactly there, right exactly. That, you know, that horrific and funny all at the same yeah. time. Because, like, you know, at that moment, you're like, well, damn, we need to kill this guy because he just walked in and killed one of our guys and we did nothing. Yeah. We just stood and watched it happen. Yeah. Like, we were so mesmerized by his bullshit mm-hmm. that it just went down and we're like, oh, damn. <laughs> what the? Right. And, uh, but that's when you also get the whole, like, why should we trust you? He's crazy. And he's, yeah. like, you see the break. I'm, like, I'm not crazy. Yeah. Right. Like, I'm, he's got yeah. that. I'm, he's very, very I'm just a man with a plan, that. right? Yeah. And what's interesting is in that scene there, he talks about having a plan. Yes. Right. And then later on, he talks about not having a plan. Yeah. Well, and it's just, it, then it shows that conflict of that character, right? Yeah. Where he wants to not have a plan, 
but in order to not have a plan, he also has a plan. Yeah. Which is what's funny is he's, it's that, that idea where, you know, even just like with Batman, he, he wants to, he does play that line of being the good guy, but he kind of blurs over a little bit more because he's still deciding his own, you know, choices for things. Right. So, I mean, I don't know, just, it's that blurry line that they have. You always think of yourself as a better person than what mm-hmm. you say you are. Right. Yeah. So. So then, you know, he's all, you know, a year ago, you would never, you know, worry you never about would have this. thought you wouldn't be this, hiding yeah. in your basements. You wouldn't be doing all this stuff. You'd just be out there doing it. And now, yeah. now you're afraid, you know, afraid yeah. of the Batman. So let's kill him. I'll kill him for a million or half of everything. Right. Mm-hmm. And ta da, ta da, ta da. Oh, he'll be fine. Right. Yeah. And then they're like, well, how can we trust you? And blah, blah. blah. And, then, and then I love that he then just opens his coat and he's got his little like, grenades and, he's and then like, he just Da-da! yep and then just strolls off yep you know it just it's just so perfectly done yeah right um yeah no it's it's a, it's a great it's a great scene for for the that character yeah and yeah you see you, this throughout this you're getting introduced to dent and and uh uh, Bruce is trying to figure out if you can trust him. Yeah. If he's actually. Well, because you find is. out then that Rachel is dating Dent mm-hmm. as well. They work together and they. Uh, so then there's a whole other reason why Bruce is also interested. He's also in internal Dent. affairs and he yeah. investigated a lot of Gordon's men. So he's he's very skeptical. He, skeptical well, he's always about known as Two Face, right? Yeah, which was an interesting. I like that little bit of a nod there, right? Mm-hmm. So, but the, it's just a. It's not in the beginning. You don't find out until later, right? It's yeah. like oh, just that that nickname that I had, right? Yeah. And uh, just, but he's he's showing more and more that he really does care and want to clean up the streets, mm-hmm. and he's got the the gusto to try to figure it out, right? Right. Okay, so what's up next? So then they decide to do a coordinated attack to try to get the money from the the banks because yeah. they you know know that they're targets by say the Joker right because mm-hmm. um, they're trying to clean up the city uh, so they go to go do it and uh, when they get there Gordon finds out that the banks have been cleared out mm-hmm. and uh, Lao uh, yes, has the ac- taken the money yeah so the accountant yeah he basically says well you didn't give me a chance to wait and ask you guys I took all the money mm-hmm. and I put it in a safe place because you know. There, I'm the only one that uh, that uh, can be save you guys now, right? Yeah. So, so in the meantime, too, uh, Wayne Enterprises was going to, was looking into a business deal with Lao's company, um, and the, it fell through because they found some thinking hinky there. And uh, Bruce, kind of, it sounds like he knew about it. He just needed confirmation about it. Yeah. So he has a connection as Bruce Wayne as well. Yeah. To the company, right? So, so then Lao leaves and goes back to China. Yeah. And so then we get a great scene in the bank where Batman just shows up, and it's just, it's all comic booky, right? Mm-hmm. He's there, and it's like, how did he get there? How do you get through everyone? And then then he just disappears too. Yeah. Right? Like it's just like mid sentence. Right? <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Um. So then. Basically, the idea that he talks to Gordon, he talks to Dent mm-hmm. and says, you know, if I bring him back, can you, can you, um, can he help you help me out? You know, let's, let's get this done. Right. Yeah. So then, you know, then we get the Batman heading over to, to China, uh, to get him. And that's a really cool scene. It feels out of place. Yeah. It does. Really yeah, it does. Because, I mean, it has an important role to play, but it feels mm-hmm. so different, right? Yeah, like it kind of, it, it's one of those scenes was like really cool, but yeah, it's completely, it kind of slows the pace down yeah. because it's like, it's, it's where Begins was more focused in the story that it was trying to tell. Mm-hmm. Dark Knight is trying to tell a story, but it starts branching out a little bit more. Yeah. To show you the world's bigger. Yeah. Right? Well, it sounds funny, but it's cool to see what he does. But at the same time, it would have made no difference to the story if it had just been like, if I brought him back here and then he just shows up with a note on it that says from mm. Batman. It would have been like, oh, sweet. He went over and got him. Cool. Move on. Like, it really didn't need to happen. Yeah. Right? So, with that being said, it was cool you know, that I guess the reason- it shows him using, it sounds funny, but using his Bruce Wayne aspect to help Batman, though. Yeah, he, there's, the, the purpose of the scene, though, was to introduce you to Lucius's sonar. Yes. That's the whole point of it. Yeah. Right, was the fact that he was able to map the entire building with his yeah. cell phone. Yeah. Because um, guess what? Lucius is saving the day again. Right? Right. So, you, 
you know, he goes in, you know, he uses explosives and all this cool stuff and takes all these guys out and pops out through a, a drop plane. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, a little parachute hook yeah. plane idea, right? Where it just comes over and grabs a beacon and pulls him right out of the building, which was really fabulous. Right. And brings him back and then it's just like, boom, he's here. So we're going to, you know, try him and yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then with that, the Joker is all frustrated. Um, and he starts Because they were going to charge people. them. They were charging what with a Rico case, right? So, yeah. So that they could, the idea that if they charged, it showed they were all conspiracy, conspiracy aiding together and they were grouped together so they had a pooled funds so by charging Lao they could charge all of them so they had the entire mob basically mm-hmm. all of them in the same court case and that was the uh, that definitely paid it a target on Dent's back yeah for sure so so then the Joker goes off and starts kidnapping people because he's not in the light anymore yep uh, pay attention to me and he starts saying that he's going to start killing people and if the bat doesn't pull off his mask yeah. And they start killing people and he's like, Mwah. And uh it doesn't really seem to affect Gotham too much mm-hmm. until uh Commissioner Loeb dies. Yeah. Well, because he killed the judge for the case. Um they they went to go try to kill the mayor uh, well, yeah. later on. They put then they put targets on their back for a whole bunch of them. They kind of yeah. give marks of them of, of what happened. And, and Loeb was so close. Gordon caught it just a second too late Mm -hmm. of what was going on, right? Uh, It was interesting. I had forgotten about that. And I look at the scene. I'm like, something's hinky. They're talking about, no, something, something's weird. Oh, don't. Oh, yeah, that don't forget. (laughs) So, you know, it's kind of interesting because the the commissioner Loeb was named after Jeff Loeb Mm -hmm. because he wrote so many uh, books that were seen as as pivotal to it and now he's got a black stain on him from his racist comments yeah in the marvel uh, television unit so it's, yeah. it's kind of sad to see like you think about that and it's like these little dark stains like just all yeah. these little like moments you know it's really sad yeah um but now they're at the funeral then the funeral the yeah. commissioner right it's so they set up pretty brazen of them honestly uh, they had a lot of sniper and protection going on, of course, um, but they had a, a full traditional uh, parade funeral for the for the commissioner there, mm. and uh, and they have it set up with the uh, Joker shows that he has an actual um, trip set up for for um, Batman there, mm-hmm. and so he goes and he trips. The, there's a wire idea where he caught it too yep. late, grabbed the attention of the snipers, and uh, you know. He, he has a big plan in yeah. place, in all honesty, right? Full chaos. Full, full orchestrated so, chaos is the difference, right? right? It's not actual chaos of the people can do what they want. Yeah. It's, I want to put them in a, in a situation where I believe this is what they will do. Yeah. And, but that's not real chaos of letting things happen. Mm-hmm. It's like it forcing the odds. Right? Yeah. So. So then he ends up shooting and Gordon saves the mayor. Yeah. But Gordon dies. Well, because then all of the the you find out all the people that are in the honor guard there mm-hmm. are uh, what escaped escaped inmates Arkham or inmates. Arkham right, and uh, so they're all mental illness patients. Yeah. And, so he's uh, able to control them. Yep. Yeah. Right. So it's all a big ruse again with with Joker just kind of spitting in people's faces about things, right? You know, they have the, they even have the name tags are the different people that are yeah. involved with it. You know, he just thinks he's just amazing. Right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, but then Gordon, yeah, he gets shot. Yeah. Saving the mayor. We did forget the scene though, that when he tries to get Dent at the Wayne party. Mm. But, oh yeah. I knew there was another person that they targeted and I couldn't remember. Who yeah. He shows up at Wayne's thing and he disappears yeah. and shows back up as Batman. And is like, yeah. oh, I'm Batman. And, you know, makes Wayne look like a pussy and mm-hmm. runs away. And but then he ends up having to save Rachel um, yeah. by jumping out the window. But that's when you also get more. Like, you slowly start getting introduced to the Joker's um, story about, you know, how do I have to get these scars? Right. Oh, it's interesting that you noted the first time he tells that story, he. Uh... Every time he tells the story. OK, so every time I, I noticed at some points he was trying to look in their face this the second yeah. time, but he never. He he makes very little eye contact. And he looks up a lot. He looks up a lot. He looks to the left. He he's he's and those are clear tell, which is interesting to have actually in acting mm-hmm. as well. Um, 
clear cut signs that you are lying. You're making a story up. Yeah. Right. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Like that he and you can always... see that. Right. And it's like, obviously something is, is a lie mm-hmm. uh, in there. Right. And with how many different times he tells a story or, yeah. or were they all like somewhat broken, ex- real experiences, but broken in di- into different sections. Right. Mm-hmm. So either way he's traumatized yeah there's something whatever happens that right caused, so caused but it. yeah so then so with that then of course then he's because yeah, he was throwing a fundraiser ball for yeah. uh, for harvey right because he's decided he's going to put his full full weight uh behind getting him um you know having his support right so yeah. uh, well i think the only reason why is because dent actually supported batman yeah right and that was the that was his biggest crux i think was okay, well, this guy cares about the city and he also isn't making me out to be a bad guy, that he understands that there is a reason for that, right? Yeah. And so it's like, oh, okay, we can be friends. <laughs> we can be homies. We yeah. can hang. So back now to Gordon dying. Gordon's dead. Um, so then it comes down to Bruce is like, I've got So to- with that, that happened. And I was like, what the... I've seen this movie so many times and I still actually forgot about it for a moment. And it's I was just been like, a while since this can't it though. be it. I was like, he's not dead. <laughs> and like with the whole telling of his wife and everything too, I'm like something. I'm just sitting there. I was like super perplexed. I'm like, what actually happened? And maybe five, 10 minutes later, I'm like, wait a second. Okay, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> But try not to spoil that for kiddos. Yeah, and I was like, don't, because I almost leaned over and be like, he's not dead, right? I'm like, no, because kiddos going to hear that and it's going to ruin everything. I was like, keep your mouth shut. Yeah. You know what's happening. You're good. (laughs) So Bruce decides, well, I have to unmask myself because... Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Um, I have to do this. And uh, they go ahead and they... Have a press conference, and then Harvey decides to say, "You know what? No, I'm, I'm the Batman." Yeah, which he, you know, Bruce doesn't know he was all prepared, mm-hmm. standing there. Uh, Rachel was very unhappy about that because Completely. it was the you were standing there, and you just let him do that. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, Bruce understood that you know Harvey was he really cared about that. Yeah. He thought that it was important to to let that let that happen, right? So bit of a i don't think that bruce was just chickening out about it but i think he was more blindsided by it but mm-hmm. also like okay well let's see how this plays out because he obviously cares and he thinks this is the right choice so yeah so during all this too though you've got the guy that was looking into lao for wayne mm-hmm. um and it's your favorite one of your favorite moments so with lucius so the guy goes up and talks to him. Yes. And says, you know, I think uh, you, you lying, you, the, all this R&D, I know. Who, oh, yeah. Know so the, the, the accountant is. guy, right? So in, in Wayne Enterprises, yeah, he's like, he's, he's like, yeah, they're fine. The numbers are fine. Blah, blah, blah. You know, Bruce isn't going to run out of his trust fund type thing. And, uh, and Fox is just kind of blows him off. Like, well, we can't let that happen. So run all the numbers again. So he runs the numbers again. And what happens when you look at numbers more? I know that from experience. You start finding things and you dig into them because you think that there's a possible issue and you can't let it go. Well, of course, in this case, there obviously would be something that would be like, I wonder what this is, because the more curiosity you have that, you know, if you're really digging into it, then then you dig and who knows what you find. Right. So then he goes to Fox and he's like, he's like, well, there's, you know weird budgets over here and there's all this going on over here and you know i'm pretty sure that uh you know he's he's batman and he's like so 10 million dollars yeah he needs i need 10 million dollars a year a year to keep quiet and i love that fox doesn't even miss a beat and he's like you you know you work for probably one of the richest people in the world and you also now are implying that he you goes out and beats criminals to a pulp every night with his bare hands. And your plan is to blackmail this individual. Yeah. And I just love that line so much because it's so true. Mm-hmm. Like if you really wholeheartedly believe it, believe that you really think that was the smartest thing to do. Right. right. And, um, uh, I thought that was really funny. So then he, he, uh, kind of sulks back into the corner uh-huh. and be like, okay, uh, 
point made. I'm going to walk away now. So well, that's one of those the age old questions though is like, you know, no one seems to in the comics ever question where the money is going or where it's coming from, right? Right. It just it's like happens. And uh, yeah, he he owned the company, so there's that. Because if there's other shareholders, of course that no one would be allowed to you know, other people would question it. But he's he owns all the shares, but it's still a public company. Yeah. Public companies have legal rules. Yeah. Involving accounting and all of that and all the financial statements. I'm sorry, as, as an accounting background, like that would be a nightmare, right? So it's totally not feasible at all. But right. in the realm of, you know. But I guess that's what they're saying is that it is feasible. You just need to ignore it. Yes. Right. No, exactly. Right. So you need to just look the other way and just assume that something weird is going on. And, you know, it's all technical stuff you wouldn't understand. Right. <laughs> So. so we jump back and Harvey's been arrested and, you know, it's all part of his plan. He's pretty sure the Batman will save the day. Yeah. Um, and he gives Rachel his coin and uh, she finally realizes his coin is too, two faced, mm-hmm. two headed. So he makes his own luck. He's all like, see, I got this. Everything's OK. Yeah. Right. So they, they, they get in their vehicles and they take off. And uh, surprise, surprise, the Joker shows up. Mm hmm. And uh, it's such an orchestrated, like, he has figured out everything um, for, for like, they take out helicopters. like Slaughter's the best medicine. Right? Truck there. I love that, too. Yeah. Like, it's just that simple little thing where it's just, you know, yep. just a spray-painted ass in front of laughter. Like, yep. Which is really weird, actually, how similar those words are. <laughs> <laughs> you never think that laughter is in slaughter. Right. Which is disturbing. <laughs> so... But I love too where he's like he's attacking the the armor car from the van. He's like shooting it with things, and he's like, no, 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 no. give me something else, give me something else. Mm-hmm. And then he finally pulls out like the rocket launcher. Yeah, <laughs> like it's just give me something bigger, right? It's just so awesome. Um, and that's when finally then the Batman shows up in his tumbler and he starts taking things out. And you still get all the like the chase through that whole area. Like it's a just a fantastic action piece where it's just back and forth. Yeah. Um, the only thing I wasn't a big fan of is when he gets into this bat pod mm-hmm. and uh, the bat pod's cool until the very end. After it he, launches out of the, well, he the snakes cream. through and that's an awesome scene. He watched the, the truck flip that the Joker's in, which surprisingly that he survived. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Batman rolls up the wall a bit and it like It's like the worst scene in the movie. It bothers me every single time I see it. It looks weird. It looks awkward. Well, first off, kudos to Batman for having the balls to just run headfirst into a wall and trust that the machine's gonna do what it's supposed to do. <laughs> I bet That's my first thing. I'm like, that is some courage right there. Um and it yeah, it just every single time I see that thing flip doesn't make any sense. No, I it, cannot. Well, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't look good too. Yeah, everything looks so good in that movie except for that. Except yeah, for when it's it, like, like what the hell just happened? Yeah, that defies physics. Like I don't get it. Especially because <laughs> so, the wheels flip too. Yeah, it hurts my head. I can't even try to. But back to that semi flipping. I love that scene. And That's how he flips, and then he comes up, and then Joker's all like, you know, come at me, come at me, come at me, bro. And he's got his gun out, and Batman's going to charge him, and going to run him over, and they, you know, last minute, Batman plays chicken with himself, and mm-hmm. launches off, and... and um, He runs into a wall, but not a person. Right. What the hell is that about? <laughs> <laughs> so then, they, there he is, and he's he's laid down. I love that, the fact that he actually has the, um, the, uh, bzz, right... The Hands electrified in? no oh. the electrified cowl. Oh yes, right. And they try to take it off. Yes, and it's just it's just fun. So then you find out that Gordon, who did not die, who did not die, <laughs> uh, yep, arrests Joker, mm-hmm. and so everything falls into the plan. You know, everyone's happy. Woo! You know, Joker's in prison. And you think the movie would end, but no. <laughs> But wait, there's more. <laughs> right? And so in that moment then, uh, you know, Harvey goes to get taken home, escorted home, and and uh, you also find out that Rachel gets a phone call and all that. And yep. That so then gonna, some of the cops are going to be taking them home. Mm-hmm. So they go off on their merry way. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Merry way. 
So uh, Joker is being interrogated. Oh, no, he's in the, the jail cell at first right now. And he's just, it's very cool because he's, he's so calm in mm-hmm. there, right? And, uh, and you get to see him. This is the first time you really get to see him without his coat, too. Yeah. Kind of a different style to him. I like the colors and the outfit that he actually has on, right? Um, but he's, he's just so calm and collected in there. Yeah, it's just kind of eerie. Yeah. Right. It's like, because it kind of Oh, and then uh, Gordon becomes commissioner. Yeah. So he he has his slow clap for him. Yeah. You know, kudos to the commissioner there. So he has this like false sense of like, I I, uh, congratulate you as well. Like, I know what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So Then then you get to see Batman's, the the violence of Batman, right? His rage, because he's just like... Well, yeah, then they bring him into the interrogation room and they're trying to... uh, to figure out what's going on and uh, because they didn't and didn't make it home. Yeah. Right? And Rachel. And Rachel is also missing at the moment too, yeah. right? So they're trying to figure out if he's involved with anything at mm-hmm. all, right? And uh, so you find out that through it, because Batman won't make the choice of killing Joker, Joker was then going to make him make the choice of killing one of them. Well, it was... It, I like his way of... of describing it because you know uk you're actually to kill someone is to make a choice over their life or death so it's not so what's the difference between having two people which you have to make a choice you are therefore choosing one to live and one to die you know and so he it was interesting the idea where he wasn't actually you know making him commit murder but at the same time, still making him make a choice that is similar to committing murder, right? Because you're choosing so, one of them or the other. Right? Yeah. So I thought it was, you know, again, very well played on the Joker's part. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, again, he's putting them in those scenarios that it's not true chaos. It's orchestrated, yeah. you know, um, difficulty. So, um, yeah, well, it's interesting to see what he does. Yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of fun to see that and like, like in the back and forth, and then so Batman finds he Joker gives him an address, gives him two addresses, mm-hmm. and Batman trusts that the address he gets is Rachel's, and he's going to go after Rachel because he's fallen in love with Rachel. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, um, Kiddo had a really hard time with the fact that they switched actresses. It's, it's still weird to me, yeah. Well, she was she was having her kid at that time. So no, yeah, okay. They was either write the character out completely or. I didn't know that. Okay, so, yeah. that makes sense. Uh, so, um, oh, don't forget this, the the jail guy with his insides hurting. Yeah. So then Batman's taking off, and then Gordon's going off to the other address. Yeah. Right. And then you got the dude that's all like, "Ah, my guts, my guts," and no one's paying attention to him. And, and the whole time, Joker's just like, "I want my phone call." I yeah. Just want my phone call. Right. And he torments and and taunts the one cop into coming at him and show that really he had nothing on him. After getting that beating, he turned around and took that guy out pretty easily. Yeah. And then I love, too, because he's just like, he went, they're like, well, what do you want? What do you want? I just want my phone call. Yeah. Right? It seems so innocuous, right? right. And you're like, yeah, wait a second. And then, boom, explosion. Well, because the the uh, all of a sudden, after that, that phone call there, his the, that's cellmate's uh, stomach starts ringing. Mm-hmm. And, oh, yeah, and he told him that they uh, make the voices go away if, you know. Make the, make the pain go away with it. And uh, he put a bomb inside of the game. Yep. So that was a phone call right there. Yep. And so then the Joker gets to leave. Yep. He uh, gets out to continue. Again, so then it shows that Gordon realizes that he wanted to get caught because yeah. he planned, already pre-planned how to break out. Yeah. So he was expecting to get caught, expecting to have that happen, mm-hmm. making sure that he could have that moment to talk to Batman, talk to Gordon, all of that sort of stuff, and then make all that happen. So that is incredibly detailed planning. Right. It's impressive. So then Batman shows up at the address that he's given and he walks in and finds Dent on the floor in a pool of... Uh... Gasoline. gasoline and drags him out and so you find out that joker swapped the addresses on him yeah because he knows what was more important to that man because of, because of the way he threw himself off yep at him right so yeah to, to save her out the window that, that yep. one time and uh so that's then the building explodes and because uh harvey's been coated in gasoline he lights on fire uh, at the same time, then just before Gordon's able to get in there, boom! Rachel explodes. Mm-hmm. Sadness. 
sadness. I was just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Complete sadness. Yeah. Uh, and so then Harvey's alive. And very angry. Very angry. Refusing pain medication. Yeah. So one thing that's kind of cool is I absolutely love the look that they use for this version of Two-Face. Um, and Nolan has said in that he never expected this version to go on, even though Aaron Eckhart wished it could have. Mm. And what you said is because he really did feel like Two-Face yeah. a lot more than Tommy Lee Jones ever did. Oh, right? yeah. And uh, so, so um, but then you find out, too, that, that you know, this Joker still wants to, you know, find out who the Batman is. Well, yeah. So he's going to blow up a hospital. Yeah. Um, so then the dude, the accountant, decides to go on TV and say... You know, hey, I know who Batman is. I well, can't sit back anymore. Yep. So, yeah, he's trying to get the public fury, uh, you know, concern up. Because if they're going to be worrying about a hospital, then you have a lot of people at stake for that. Yeah. More than just random people dying, quite honestly. Right. And and it's the idea that now everyone's out there trying to figure out the Batman, right? So then they're trying to evacuate all the hospitals and all that. And then... Uh, the guy's about to gonna gonna go to announce that he who who the Batman is. Yeah. And then the Joker's like, actually, I've changed my mind. Yeah. And if he says who you know he needs to die on the hour and yeah, he's going back like, and forth because again things are not going exactly like yeah. he wanted, so he has to manipulate things. Yeah. Right. I like how um, Bruce saves that guy. Yeah. You know. And well, actually, no, sorry. He no, that not the hot. That's not what it was. He's going to blow up the hospital if the guy says who Batman is. Yes. Yeah. Now, he's changed it now, right? Yeah. Because that was the thing is he he doesn't wa- he wants to be the one that would unmask and he doesn't mm-hmm. want anyone else to do it. And he has decided that he's just too much fun, right? Yeah. It's that idea that you can't live without him. And uh, so he's trying. Yeah, he's trying to stop him. So then everyone. That's why I was like, I'm trying to think. I'm like, why are everyone trying to kill him? Uh-huh. Uh, that's why it's because the public is trying to then kill this accountant. Yeah, because then um, you find out him. what cops have family members in the hospitals. And yeah. Who's on the so details. Then, and- yeah. So then the, the, the Bruce goes and because this guy is going to ram this car that the accountant is in and Bruce takes his Lamborghini. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> and uh, and uh, gets rammed by by this guy. Right. And uh, and so the accountant sees who saved him. Yeah. And it's that little bit of the nod of like, you know, I, I did something to try to help you here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, because I know and, you know, and, you know, let's, let's stop this BS here, man. Right. <laughs> so then we get the lovely scene with the Joker in his uh, little white dress. Yes. His little nursing outfit. It's so cute. And he's all like flopping around a little. Right. Walking. It's so funny. And, uh. You get, you get, you know, the most uh, memed uh, moment of the Dark Knight. Mm. Oh, well, the everyone loses their mind. Yep. yep. Insert whatever you want and everyone loses their mind. Yeah, well, we use that even so oh, much, yeah. right? It's so perfect. It's it's right? it's a great way to describe what people do, right? Mm-hmm. You know, where it's just like you, you do this one little thing and people go crazy. And mm-hmm. it's like, oh, my goodness, right? And uh, yeah, you get a lot more explanation about about him and a lot more of that guts of him trusting Harvey um, and up to the chaos of things. Yeah. You know? And so it's interesting because you don't I, I pretty I'm pretty sure that Joker knows already what Two-Face is going to do. Yeah. You know, because he, he know he he's got to have that ability to read people because you can't orchestrate supposed chaos without thinking and knowing how people will react to certain things, yeah. right? So I, I don't truly believe that he knowingly put himself in that much danger. Yeah. Um. So, but he uh, forces him, persuades him to be a more on his side of the idea and kind of pushes him over the edge that he's already on. Uh, super distraught, of course, but it's like, you know, they could have done more for, to help you. They did this. They did this. He starts feeding him all sorts of all sorts of things. Right? Tells me he's pretty. Yep. Right. Yep. So uh, then uh, Harvey Two Face goes off after the cops that put him in the scenario. And, yep. And uh, I love too because at the end that with he's in there where, he, where he's with the mob boss too. The mob boss he flips his coin and now he's got his two he has his two sided coin mm-hmm. damaged side and not side. And, uh, you know, it's like, oh, you live today. And they just automatically flip it, but your driver doesn't, right? Yeah. Like, 
It just showed he still was making his own luck. Yeah. Right? Like, Where it's like, oh, well, that didn't work out. That I didn't get to kill you. So I'm going to try it with this guy, right? And he right. probably would have thought of some other reason as to mm-hmm. why he would have gotten to cause chaos, you know, right. problem, right? So. So at the end of the day, the Joker decides he's going to do more damage. Because he still hasn't gotten what he wanted. Right. Batman is having, you know, he's just making him run around. So. I think he just doesn't like that Batman is is so scary and not enough people fear a Joker. Yeah. It's, like, it's a weird, you know, it's the attention aspect, right? Yeah. Well, it's the idea he has been able to push Batman over the edge to do what he wants. Yeah. So he, he hasn't been able to manipulate him, him right? right? So, yeah. So at the end of it, you got, you know, two fairies are going along. Yeah. And one's full of convicts and one's full of... of well, because they're evac- part of that evacuation process, yeah. right? So you're evacuating and uh, he's all, of, you know... There's a detonator, and you get to blow up the other person. Oh, yeah. One of mm-hmm. you needs to do it so that you, you know, so you all survive. Yeah. Right? So hurry up. You have till the stroke of midnight. Right? Yeah. And it seems like it would be like, oh, automatically, like the, the convict should die. Mm-hmm. But then you really start thinking about, like, this is definitely a moral dilemma. Right? Well, it's like, yeah, like, what would you do? Like, would you, you know... And but who knows if those are actually the other? Per- I always wonder, like, was it really the other person's detonator, or is it their, or is it own? their own? Right, right, yeah. Like, well, because really, what would it have really proved? Right, people would have died, and they would have just assumed if they had hit that button, you'd never be able to prove that the other person didn't hit their button. Mm-hmm. So you would assume that, say, say if the the civilians had blown up, you could have just blamed the convicts. Yeah, and no one would have really been a- known otherwise. No one would have questioned it. Yeah. You know, or vice versa. Mm-hmm. If if the the convicts had died, quite honestly, it would be easy enough to sweep it under the rug and be like, oh yeah, they they did what they had to. You yeah. know. So either way, wouldn't it be a matter of what actually, died. or maybe they both would have died. Right? Who knows? Maybe yeah. the bomb, maybe the thing would have been both. Maybe there was no bombs at all. Who right? knows? Right? And it was just to cause panic. No, there had to be a bomb because at the end there he goes to go blow it up. Oh yeah, I know. Blow but something I'm just, up. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. Right? Like the the whole panic of it all. Uh. So then uh, Batman shows up and he's going to try to take this whole thing out. And he's he set up this whole sonar thing and with Lucy's is turned every cell phone into son, into a into sonar. Which Fox is very unhappy about. Yeah. He's like, so he basically said, as long as this thing is machine is running, I will not be working here. Yeah. So Batman tells him, you know, when you're done using it, because you're going to help me out with this, then type in your name and we'll be done. Yeah. So he tells him so. A lot of money for this. Oh uh, yeah, for one kind of go. Yeah. Uh, so so they get there and and Gordon has to go off because his family's missing. Mm-hmm. And uh, so then the SWAT team's going in to because they know where the Joker is and Batman's found where the Joker is and it's there's kinda, a whole bunch of hostages. Yeah, in this building. doctors and all that and it's cool to see because the fact that the Joker has swapped them, he's made all the hostages look like joker thugs and they've got their guns taped mm-hmm. to their hands and all that so batman's got to go through and he's got to basically save them well, from the all the swat. swat is just gonna take out mm-hmm. all of the 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 thugs because they wouldn't be able to put the guns down like the swat would have ordered them to yeah so and so you don't really blame them for it but it's that idea where because batman realizes because alfred had told him you know there he he'd kind of give him a lesson a life story feel where you know some people have a motivation for and you can reason and explain their behavior some people just want the world to burn Mm -hmm. well joker he's realizing more and more that the joker is not predictable enough no he doesn't play by anyone else's rules so you you have to think completely different when it comes to approaching a scenario devised by him so in this case swapping them very smart move on the joker's part not what you would expect at all. So yeah. that's the idea of checking it, right? So then the SWAT team, of course, doesn't want to listen to it. Batman doesn't have any option to wait for them to realize that he's correct. He just decides to start targeting the SWAT people as well. Yep. So they just got to take all of them out. And so which paints a target on him, basically. Yeah. Because now he's attacking cops. I love his incredible mathematical calculations. Yeah, he's a math wizard. He player. is amazing. To time those knots on all those SWAT members <laughs> and be able to kick them up so that they all land and don't ever hit the concrete yep. are all hanging perfectly floor to floor. Mm-hmm. That's impressive, man. It is. That's it's a skill. Geometry. Mad skill. Geometry. Yeah, I don't even know what kind of geometry that is. <laughs> Real life skills, right? Right. Appar- there you go. Apparently. When someone questions whether you need to use geometry in real life... <laughs> 
Because if you want to be Batman, you need to learn your geometry. Right? Geometry and physics. And physics, yeah. Rolled into one. Yeah, there you go. That's the reasoning why. It was just a, you know, stay in school kids message. <laughs> you too could be Batman if you stay in school. Yeah. Uh, so the end of the, basically he gets in a big battle, battle with Joker, which is pretty, pretty awesome. The one, one moment though I think was missing was that he should have had a crowbar. I really think it would have been awesome if it had been a crowbar, not just a pipe. Yeah. Uh, kind of a, kind of a cool nod. You get your Batman that throws a dog off. Uh, yeah, there off, we go. Off. Uh, but the end of it, uh, he ends up throwing the Joker's going to blow everything up because the, the people the, have the decided they're like, yeah. no, we're well, not going to do I this. I love that scene for the fairies because, you know, you have this one civilian. The civilians are voting mm-hmm. for everyone. They're trying to make this a, a choice, a, a group choice. And they voted to actually blow the convicts up. Mm-hmm. Well, then this one guy is all like, well, come on, come on. We can we can do this. Like, well, you have the guts to do this. Well, then they give him the detonator and he can't make that choice. Mm-hmm. And then it, it shows that idea of. You know, when you're you're faced with actually having to do something of that, even when you're pushed into a corner of your own safety feel, um, that's a big decision to make for a normal, regular mm-hmm. person. Right. Um, and then the convicts, of course, are all just like, you know, freaking out. Um, but I love that this big burly guy who just looks terrifying walks up and, you know, says, you know, you're going to give this to me type thing. Or I'm going to do and, what you should have and, done. You know, 10 minutes ago, ago or, type thing. Yeah. Right. And it's like, and he just chucks it out the window. And I think I, I, I love that because it showed the humanity and the morality almost between both groups that mm-hmm. we just automatically is going to assume that all the convicts are automatically horrible people still. Yeah. And all the civilians are, are, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if you want to say good people or whatnot, but, um, you know, can make that choice yeah. or are willing to make that choice. Well, they're, it shows they're not willing to to make a choice and, and take a life. And then the convicts are also realizing that they don't want to make a choice again like that, yeah. you know? And um, and I, I like that it, it kind of flies in, in the Joker's face, right? So. Yeah. I think that's a really cool movement. So then he goes to blow it up, and Batman chucks him off, and but Batman's still not able to let him die. Um, I remember when I first saw that, I seriously thought he was going to die. Yeah, and I was like, "Are they going to kill the Joker again, like they did in '89? Like seriously? Like <laughs> wow, uh, the same way too? Yeah, like by falling." Well, then you got that really awesome shot of him being upside down. Yes, I love the shot. The fact that he turns the camera so that it, so it's the proper way to see him if he was standing but yet he's hanging mm-hmm. and his hair and everything just floating and you get that really weird like laugh too yeah that ah, 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 is in there too right yeah and uh but joker just you know he can't let him he's all excited that we you know we're destined to do this forever because you just can't do it right, right? i love uh, that he, the, he nods to that the idea that we're just you know um we're yeah we're we're gonna be going back and forth because you're too much fun and, um, you know, you can't let me die and I don't want to unmask you really because this is just, this is great. Yeah. You know, and I, 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 I love that. Yeah. So. Uh, so then he gets off to jail, we guess. Yeah. We just, <laughs> they kind of skip over that. And cause then you find out that, that, uh, then the more important things are the fact that we now we switch to Gordon and Dent. Yeah. And Dent's just completely gone off the, the deep end. You know, and uh, has figured out who who brought uh, the corrupt cops idea, um, brought the brought Rachel and them and is attacking Gordon for it and blaming him for mm-hmm. it because your men, your people, they were all, um, you know, responsible for this. So I had to watch the person that I love tell them that they were going to be OK when I knew it wasn't going to be OK. Yeah. And I want you to do the same thing. So he's gotten his son hostage now, mm-hmm. right? Um, which is... Is showing how broken he was and how quickly it was yeah. for him to break, right? One thing I thought was interesting, though, with that scene is it's kind of very similar. Not not the dialogue, but the way Two-Face is taken out mm. is very similar to Batman Forever. Basically, oh, okay. well, Batman Forever, Batman makes note to say, hey, 
your coins. Yeah. And then you go, oh, yeah, ha, huh. flips the coin. He throws a whole bunch of coins, freaks out and falls. Mm. This is kind of the same way where it's almost like, well, no. Oh, wait, no, sorry. I have to flip my coin. Yeah. He goes to his coin and then Batman knocks him off. Yeah. Like, it was weird that they paralleled that. That, that. It shows that it's very important. That, that crutch. That, right? Yeah, exactly. That That's his downfall is that dependent on the coin. Yeah. Right. And that's that's where you can catch him. You know, off guard. get him, yeah, slip up basically, right? right? So. so, so he knocks him off and he dies. Yeah. Um, so as he shows, then because of his burns, he was just living off adrenaline. Yeah. And he was probably like, not going to be living, even if he hadn't done all of this. Yeah. He wouldn't have probably survived much because, longer. Yeah. And that, that was one thing Nolan had said basically. He never expected him to go any further. Kiddo was super, uh, Freaked out, but impressed by Two Face's appearance. The yeah. fact that his eyeball was hanging out and his. Yeah. I love when he uh, he goes to the bar there when he's trying to find. Um, he's All trying to talk it. to the cops and yeah. everything, right? And he takes his drink, and part of his jaw skin muscle falls off mm-hmm. there with the drink, and it was just like that little bit where it shows that he that skin that is on there is not yeah. healthy at all. Yeah, right. It is. He is falling apart mm-hmm. and it's just that extra nod that he isn't isn't well he it's is not. dead man walking he, exactly right? right so so with that then you get you get batman saying that you know what, i'll take the fall for everyone that died tonight well I yeah because you know he, now harvey has killed people and there's so much going on and if the the pillar of harvey dent falls then Everyone gets everyone. Out. Everyone's, everyone's yeah. Everyone is questioned, right? And uh, you know, I can I can fall take the fall for it because that's the whole point of Batman. He's not just a man. He's the idea, and the idea can persevere eventually, right? So he has this big old speech about and that's the important thing. So it's a little you know pack between the three of them, and it's our little secret. And he uh, and he runs off and gets chased by the cops. Yeah, and they're running out of town. And it ends so honestly a little anticlimactically with that. Yeah, it does. You know, because it it had such awesome moments with the Joker and all that that final scenes, and then then it just kind of. Bleh. You almost wonder if it had ended with his final finale with, say, the Joker, if it would have been a little bit. That would have ended on a really awesome high point for sure. Especially with even if he had to have taken out Two Face and did his little speech, but then had to take him out, maybe I don't know something. Yeah, I don't. You know, I don't. Maybe I just don't like the fact that he's turned into a villain the only villain, a year after file. he's been Batman. Right. I don't know. Maybe that's it. <laughs> yeah, he's barely he barely is the Batman, and there's debate back and forth if if it's six months, if it's a year between begins. He said a year ago, you guys wouldn't even have added an eye. I know, but now you're trusting the Joker. Yeah, but I mean. I mean, I assume. But then there's some people that say it's been three years. So I, I you know, it's it, either I'm way, assuming. not long enough for Batman <laughs> to to be going through all that. But right. hey, whatever. Um, I still really like the movie. Yeah, I still really like. I, and I think at the end of the day, it's it's Ledger's performance. Yeah, that makes this movie stand out for what it is. Well, you know what? When I watch this movie, you know, I, I never disagree with people who will, you know support ledger completely in his performance um so i'm not disagreeing with it but then i i kind of like okay come on you guys are super attached to it like Mm -hmm. but then i watched the movie and i'm like damn i I realize why you guys are attached to it though yeah he did a phenomenal job Mm -hmm. which made his death a million percent harder yeah um for something that he he had really showed what a good actor he was Mm -hmm. and that character was so well written Mm -hmm. with nolan that it was just this perfect connection between. yeah and it's really sad to to think that he was he was still part of the original script for the third one right before they had to scrap that and build it right from the get-go again. and it's just like what could have been type thing because nolan really showed that he had a a good handle on the wit. joker he had he had his wit to, yeah. be able to write the character exactly and so they to... they both really understood it mm-hmm. you know ledger obviously understood what nolan wanted to portray with it yeah. and and it was just a, a beautiful thing to see on the screen right yeah um so it's just it, it is sad that that he, he lost his life uh in whatever he was dealing with, that that role did not help. Yeah, um, you know uh, his mental health. So it's definitely something though of, of always remembering that you know make sure you ask for help. You tell people how you're doing. Yeah, um, 
be okay with saying, you know what, I'm off. I need to talk. Yeah. You know, and not, not, um, just shying away from it. I think it's hard too in his, his scenario there, um, that it, it kind of, it probably was easier to not trust him a little bit more, mm. right? Because he was so ingrained in that character. And I think it's, it's also really important for other people to remember that when someone is possibly showing symptoms of that to trust your gut instinct yeah. of, of not, not necessarily hounding them, but you know, still being concerned and your, your feelings are legitimate for that. And, and just keep checking on people. Right? Yeah. Uh, it's always worth doing that because you never know if it actually is helping and uh, just you, not just blowing something off and assuming mm-hmm. that everything's fine and they can just take care of it themselves. Because in, in general, we have a really hard time of taking th- care of things ourselves. Right? Yeah. And uh, we we also don't want to talk about it. And so we can all kind of help each other. Right? And hopefully try to help things out. So. Exactly. But. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I... I I said in the last podcast that that Batman Begins is a superior film. I still believe Begins is a superior film only because it's more focused. Yeah. There's less going on. It's more centralized on the, the, the character. That being said, if I was to watch the two, I'm going to pick The Dark Knight only because of the Joker. Yeah. And it's more fun. It's got a lot more of a comic book feel. Yeah. Um. The, the little bit more a little bit more action yeah more villains yeah the joker right yeah it's, it feels really like a batman movie yeah that being said though it was hilarious it was kiddo didn't like this movie he found it boring yeah there was a little too much i think of that story there was too much talking <laughs> which is so funny because i see so much action still you can tell how much he loved seeing uh the actual origin of him becoming Batman that didn't just involve like as he described parents died and poof I'm Batman yeah um he really really connected to that yeah and uh, well then then you really don't see much of Batman in this movie yes it's so much of the Joker and, and maybe the, uh, because the secondary characters is right? that for us we're impressed with what the Joker is is how he's portrayed mm-hmm. and his stories and his plots and all the subtext that's there and the psychological analyzing that can happen from that. And we're really interested in it. It shows that it's a lot more of a higher concept and it was too much for him to grasp. Yeah. Right. Which was wild. Mm-hmm. So there wasn't enough Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, there we go. But yeah. The dark night, the dark, dark night. night. Uh, tune in next week. For uh, episode 91, The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Let's so finish we'll finish off the trilogy. Uh, it's some more Radnesia coming at you in the month of August here. Uh, because, you know, there's not a lot of new stuff. Yeah, it's so weird. It's still going to be. Uh, luckily enough, though, one thing that's pretty exciting is, is Tenet has an international release date. So we'll see if we get it. Yeah. Uh, that's at the end of August. That'll be interesting. Potentially. Uh, and then one thing I am looking very much forward and I'm glad that they're going straight to on demand uh, Bill and Ted's Face of Music will be hitting in September the beginning of September very exciting uh, and summer so you know that is amazeballs yes so uh, lots of fun stuff uh, was coming at you this next month here so definitely stay cool because it's bound to be warm wherever you're at because it's summer uh and uh, it's not summer everywhere not summer okay but it's still really warm even in winter don't 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 stay cool stay warm no 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 no. stay warm stay rad sweat your balls off (laughs) and there we go stay rad dudes (laughs) thanks for joining us everyone and have a wonderful day thank you for listening want more rad content follow us on facebook instagram and twitter And don't forget to subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. And remember, be excellent to each other and party on, dudes!